Hey everyone, good Thursday evening to you. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here on this first day of spring officially in the Northern Hemisphere. Spring began at a little after five o'clock this morning. Hey, before we get to the uh, forecast and everything else this evening, a reminder that our uh, 21 News podcast now includes a weather-related podcast once a month. The first episode dropped this morning, so wherever you get your podcasts, you can listen to the 21 News podcast and my interview with local storm chaser Tyler Berry. We recorded that a couple of days ago. It dropped this morning. Uh, podcasts uh, can be found in many, many different venues. You can also watch the video version of the uh, 21 News podcast at wfmj.com slash Podcast. All right, let's get to uh, things on this Thursday evening. Uh, spring, as I mentioned, officially began this morning, a little after 5 a.m. Now, meteorological spring began on March the 1st, but astronomical spring uh, began this morning when the sun's most direct ray rays were over the equator and uh, sunrise this morning at 725, sunset this evening at 735. Unfortunately, the clouds will certainly obscure that uh, sunset across the area uh, this evening. Uh, Temperature-wise, we've gone in the wrong direction all day today, but temperature-wise, over the last couple of weeks, it's been a real back-and-forth thing. So spring has been coming northward in kind of fits and starts. We were behind schedule in terms of the annual leaf out, oh, mostly south of Washington, D.C., mostly south of Charleston, West Virginia. But the warm pattern that we've had over the last week or so has allowed the leaf out to occur a little early in parts of southern Ohio and all the way up into the panhandle of West Virginia and into southwest PA as well. We're starting to see some buds on some of our local vegetation, um, but the true leaf out, if you will, has not really begun in earnest across our part of Ohio and western Pennsylvania. All right, on this date back in 2012, we were in the middle of a historically warm March back in 2012, including many record highs on individual dates, including today's date, the 20th of March, 80 degrees for a record high. We saw several days with highs in the 80s, back in March of 2012. Uh, you know, March of 2012 was remarkably warm. It has not been as remarkable this month, but it has been a warmer than average month here in March of 2025. Pretty much everywhere east of the Continental Divide, the Rockies on east, it's only the southwest and parts of California that have had a cooler than average month so far. But, you know, it's been wild all week, these temperature swings that we've seen from day to day. Uh, yesterday evening, we were in the 70s at this time. Now we're heading for the 30s. It's a good 31 degrees cooler than late in the 5 o'clock hour on Wednesday. And uh, temperatures will start to bounce back as we head into Friday. But generally speaking, we're heading into a pretty cool pattern. Our cold front uh, is rolling through as we speak. And so, yeah, temperatures are dropping. And yes, a few snowflakes are starting to emerge off of Lake Erie. I do think there will be a snow flurry in some parts of the area before the evening is through. But of course, so Severe Weather Awareness Week rolls on in the state of Ohio. We've been spending all week talking about different aspects of severe weather, and I wanted to, to uh, touch on a very important topic this evening, that is lightning and lightning safety. Whenever I do school talks, I uh, include, you know, a graphic kind of like this one, imploring the young ones to not seek shelter under a tree. Uh, lightning, like I tell the kids a lot of times, lightning is lazy. It doesn't want to have to do the work. If it doesn't have to, it doesn't want to have to do the work of striking things on the ground. It likes to hit things that are sticking up in the air, and that includes, of course, trees. So when you look at the lightning deaths over a period from 2006 to 2023 nationally, uh, the most deaths occurred underneath trees. Second place, the water. Of course, uh, the water is a bad place to be. Whether you're fishing or boating, anything involving the water is bad news when we have thunderstorms and lightning and thunder. Also, just generally being outside, even if you're not near a tree, just being in the yard, mowing the yard, just hanging out in the yard. Uh, the, 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 phrase, the saying is, the phrase is, if thunder roars, go indoors. Because even though you might hear thunder, and even though it may seem like the lightning is fairly far away. If you can hear the thunder, you're close enough to a storm to be struck by lightning. So we, we want you to head indoors. If you do hear thunder, that means that the lightning is close enough to strike things on the ground or sticking up out of the uh, ground. All right, no lightning and thunder on our Friday. It's going to be a nice looking day, much better looking than today. A full supply of sunshine for the morning and midday. A few fair weather clouds later in the day. Now we will get off to a cold start. We'll be in the 20s pretty much area wide as Friday gets underway, but 40 or better by lunchtime. And we're heading to a seasonable 50 for the afternoon. But we have another cold front on the map. It's not going to cross the area until early in the day on Saturday. But as it does so, Saturday morning there'll be a band of showers 
And I think uh, there may be a snowflake or two right around lunchtime on Saturday as temperatures start tumbling. It's going to be another day like today where the warmest part of the day will probably be first thing in the morning. I think we'll spend a lot of Saturday afternoon in the 30s, wind chills a little cooler than that. And then the sequence kind of repeats. We'll get off to a sunny start Sunday morning like we will tomorrow morning. And then clouds will increase Sunday afternoon. This next warm front approaches late in the day Sunday with our next chance for showers. And showers, pretty good bet, into Sunday night maybe parts of Monday as well. So it's not exactly going to be a warm weekend. 44, that's a morning high on Saturday. We'll spend the afternoon mostly in the 30s. Decent day on Sunday, a little on the cool side, a few degrees below the average, but not bad. We'll be dry through most of the daylight hours Sunday towards dinner time Sunday evening. Showers may push in five, six, seven o'clock or so, setting up a soggy Sunday evening and parts of the overnight hours as well. All right, so the, the next 10 days, you'll notice no 70s. Uh, I mentioned this a few times this week, the 70s that we've had on occasion lately. Last time we're probably going to see a uh, high temperature forecast starting with the number 7 until sometime in April. The 10-day uh, forecast now reaches almost to the end of March. And while it's not a super crazy cold pattern per se, it's going to be pretty consistently chilly. Now we may see some recovery right at the end of the month. We may be a few degrees above average during the last couple of days of March, but it's a few probably, or a handful. We might see 60 on the 31st. Um, 70, 75 degrees, the kind of thing we've had on occasion lately. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it's coming back until we flip the calendar to the new month of April. I have tomorrow off as I'll be down in Columbus. So you may know that I'm speaking at the uh, Severe Weather Symposium at Ohio State. When I was a student at Ohio State 25 years ago, I was involved in organizing uh, the speakers for that symposium and everything that goes along with that. It was a lot of work uh, for the undergraduates, for the students. You know, they've got uh, the regular schoolwork to concern themselves with in addition to organizing this event. So I know what goes into it. I really appreciate it. And they were gracious enough to invite me down to speak. I'll be talking about the May 31st, 1985 tornado outbreak in our area. The 40th anniversary is coming up. So I'll be speaking uh, tomorrow afternoon if you uh, Google the Ohio State Severe Weather Symposium, uh, there probably will be a link to watch uh, if you if you want to watch. I'll be speaking tomorrow afternoon. I think my slot is at 2.45 p.m. But if you want to check out some of the other speakers as well, I think it will be live streamed. So if you do some Googling, you'll be able to find that probably pretty easily uh, during the course of the day on Friday. In the meantime, thanks for watching on this Thursday evening. Have a great Friday and a great weekend. I'll see you back here for weather for Weather Geeks on Monday.